twirling. What was it thinking? I think it is. We are live. All right. Hey, everybody. It's Marcia, and it's 2 o'clock on Tuesday. So that means it is time for Tips and Tricks at 2 on Tuesday. I hope you all have had a great weekend, and um, I hope that you are ready to check out what I'm fixing to show you. Um, we've had numerous people ask me, um, how do you, how would I do applique? And there are lots of different ways to do applique, but one of my favorites is the one I'm going to show you today. So um, I've got some great tips, some great tricks on how to work with applique and how to trace your pattern off and all of those good things. So let's get started. So this is the, isn't he cute? Oh my gosh, my little, my little goat. For those of you who did not know this, we used to own goats in Chama, and I love them. They're so much fun. Man, do they have personalities. But anyway, I digress. So this is the one that um, I, I've made this one up so that you all can see what or how I um, go from start to finish. So uh, first off, this pattern is one of the ones that we have by the wooden bear. It is um, the goat tea towel. And when you look at the inside of the pattern, she does such a fabulous job. This is this is what's on the inside of the pattern. Becky, I don't want him to have a glare, so can you mm, kind of... Too bad. How's that? All right, so, so here is an actual picture of what it's going to look like. If you need to do any kind of hand embroidery stitches, if you don't want to do it on your machine, she gives you that info as well. Of course, she shows you the other adorable little um, appliques that uh, she has come out with. And then we open up the inside. So when you guys, can you see, I mean, look at all this. So these little bits are the actual pattern pieces that you are going to trace off. Then she gives you this whole big um actual design so that you can actually see how the machines, I mean, how the machines, my brain is thinking in other things. Actually, I'm watching Sharon and she was looking at a machine, so I had to, I had to follow after her. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is the actual pattern of how you would actually lay out your design. So, um, what I have done is I have, okay, Becky, I'm going to lay him here just so we can check back with him. All right, so this is my towel. Doo, 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 doo. Now, when you're doing this, the thing that you want to think about is you want, well, first off, tea towels are really perfect for this because the thing that's nice about them is um, they're pre-made, hooray, so you don't have to make a towel. They are, um, they're pretty sturdy and they're normally a solid color. They come in every color under the sun, so you know you can match your decor or you know whatever friend you have that you want to make one for. You can match what their kitchen looks like. Lots of great options with just a plain Jane tea towel. Um, so I have chosen orange because I think he's going to look cute on the orange one. Of course, you already saw that I did the lime green, my favorite color. So that being said, that's why the goat is on the lime green one. So we're going to do this orange towel. Now the thing is that when you're going to put an applique onto something, especially a towel, you want to make sure that it's centered. Okay? So. Um, if it's not centered, then when you get ready to hang the towel, it's going to look goofy. We don't want it to look goofy. So what we're going to do is, this is super easy, not brain surgery. So for those of you who might have that engineering background, we're so thankful that you have that background. But sometimes we don't need to get hung up on a 16th or a 32nd of an inch. Okay, so this is how I do it, and it's super easy. So we're just going to fold that towel in half. Put the edges together, put the edges together, and then I'm just going to give it a nice 
finger crease. If my iron were here, I would have just ironed a little center in that. Now look, look, I have a great center. I know exactly where it is. If you need to center it this way, then you're going to find the towel. All right, so here's, here's my halfway of my towel. So I've done that. So here it is. So I could actually just do this. Fold this up. Give it a finger crease. And then there's the half, there's the center of the lower half of my towel. So I love that. Easy to do. I'm, I'm not getting my panties in a wad because I haven't had to measure. It's just quick and easy, and that's what we want. Then the other thing that I want you all to notice is, and Becky, we're going to need a close-up of this, and we got to need to make sure it's not glary. What so, am I looking at? All right, so I want you all to notice that every one of these pieces has a letter. Okay, every piece from A to, I think it goes up to um, P, but I'm not sure. I think that's right. So every one of these has a letter. Well, Kelly, who is the designer of these patterns, she is so smart. And let me tell you why she is so smart. She has labeled her pieces, A through whatever, however many pieces there are, and she tells you in the instructions that you are to lay them down according to their letter, starting with A. Oh, my gosh. So how brilliant is that? So, Becky, let's look at it here on our big guy. This is the actual layout. And so she starts with A, and we go to B, and then we come up here to, well, where's C? C may not be here. It's over here. No, it is C and D, E and F. They're kind of stacked on top of each other. And then we come up here to G, H, and then we're going to the ears, and the ears, and the face. I mean, how brilliant is that, guys, that she took the time so that you're not going, oh, now where do I lay this out? Because the thing about applique is you want it to look, quote, as real as possible, even something that's kind of a cutesy thing like this uh, goofy goat. So this is what we're going to do. First, I'm going to show you the first thing that you're going to do is you are going to get your heating bond. And guess what I forgot? The heating bond. I'll be right back. <laughs> so look at this little guy. <laughs> Have a good look at him. Isn't he precious? Okay. I'm so sorry, Becky. No, they've been looking at the towel. Okay, good. Okay, so here's the deal. This is heat and bond light. And the thing that's nice about this is, let me just show you real quick. And I know so many of you have already used this, but you know what, bear with me. I'm, I'm showing for people who don't have never used this. All right, so for heat and bond, you have paper on one side. And then when you turn it over on the other, do you see that shiny, that little shiny, it's jiggity? This is your glue. And so when you select your fabrics, you're going to iron the gluey side. You're going to draw on this side. And let me show you how easy that is. Now let's go up here. See? Look. That's really easy to see through. So I would actually trace onto the heat and bond all of my pieces. And Becky's shown you all of these. So here's the pieces. Stinking cute. We've traced them on here. And then what we do is, here's my fabric, right side of fabric, wrong side of fabric, and here are my actual pieces, right side of fabric, wrong side of fabric, here's my piece. Maybe. So I label everything that I trace off. Because the thing is, if you do not do that, then when you look at that, you go, oh, what piece is that? Now, I will tell you that there have been, um, that there are other applique designers who are not like Kelly and label all this stuff for you. So what you have to do to protect yourself is 
um, pretty much everybody gives these big sheets with all the pattern pieces. So what I actually do on the ones where they give me no clues about what the pieces are, I go through and I number them or I put an, a letter with them. And then that way what that does is that allows me to know when I'm looking at that and I go back and I look at my pattern and I go, oh yeah, that is the ear, that's the nose, that's the whatever. But Kelly is sweet and she gives us the actual letter and the name of the piece. So be sure and put that on all of your pieces because see, I've done that. I've put that on everything. So I'm not guessing what I am looking at. Everything is labeled. So do that and you'll be happier that you did. The other thing that I want you to notice that I have done is, do you see these little marks here? See them there? I mean, they are, I've got them all along both ears. This is the inner ear. Here it is on the horn. I've got them on the ends of the horn. When I look at that, that tells me that that part of my design is going to go under something. It's not going to go on top of, it's going to go under the piece that it is next to or beside or above or below, whatever. So those little tick marks, that's what that signifies. And we have Michelle Watts to thank for that little tip because she's a brilliant applicator. I just want you all to know. If you've never seen her Fiesta de Talavera, go online and look it up. Michelle, J. Michelle Watts, it is incredible. But she truly is an applique guru, and she's the one that showed us how to do those little tick marks. So, Becky, I'm just going to lay these because I want them to see how many of these pieces actually will go under something else. All right, there we go. So look at all those pieces. But then look at this poor little guy right here. No tick marks, so that means that that's going to be um, on the outside and the edges are going to be seen all the way around. And so that's why I like to do that. So that's how that works, okay? So now, what we're going to do is we can take our towel. Ooh, I got a lot of little pieces here, but they're so fun. I love them. I mean, you got it. Don't you guys think this towel is cute? I think it's cute. And I have a friend that actually is from Chama, and she still she raises goats, and she makes cheese and butter out of her goat's milk. So. Um, She's getting one of these towels. I, you know, I just have to put a shout out to that. So if you remember, I told you that Kelly tells you to start with A and work your way up. So um, now I've got to find A. A is his beard. Here it is. Beard. Okay, so here's his beard. So what you would do is, now remember, you have ironed the heat and bond onto the back or wrong side of your fabric. And before you do that, I want you all to notice, looky here. If you will notice, I have left heat and bond all the way around the outside edge. You do not want to cut your heat and bond to match your design. And the reason that you don't want to do that is because when I get ready to cut this, so let's just say I'm just going to start cutting now, I am actually cutting my um, heat and bond and fabric all at the same time so that I will have the heat and bond gluey stuff all the way out to the edge of my fabric. Because if I don't have it out to the edge of my fabric, then what happens is when it comes time to, to glue this down and lay it out, you're going to have parts of your fabric that lifts up and you don't want that. The other thing that I normally do when I'm working with these little marks like this is when I see those, I don't cut at the line. I cut a little bit outside that line, and I will know, no, no, that that is going to tuck up underneath the rest of my um, 
um, the piece that's on the outside of that. Okay, so so there they are. So we're going to, here's his beard. That's the first thing. Let's see how. So see when I turn him over, now remember this is the wrong side because it has the paper, right? So when I flip this over, there's my fabric. Now you got to admit that stinking cute for a beard. Those little swirly twirly things in there. I love that. Okay. So here we go. So we're gonna. So what you do is to get the paper to come off the back of this, you're just gonna pinch it like that with your fingernail. And do you see? I don't know if you can see it there, but do you see how it's kind of pulled away from your fabric? Look at it. Look. Ah, easy peasy. So we're gonna pull him away. This is piece A, and we're going to lay him right here in the middle of my towel. Okay, so there he is. Now then the next one is his lower mouth. So we're going to put him, and we're going to give him a squeeze. See, it comes right off. There we go. And that is going to fill in that little gap right there. Okay. And then we have um, the stems for our little flowers because remember they're over there. So I'm sorry guys, I, I did not cut enough of these things out. So guess what? I am going to grab <laughs> Aren't you all glad that you know I know how to work with scissors? Jeez, I'm so sorry guys, I should have had all these cut, but I really wanted you to see um, how you do this. Alright, so, alright, so then I would pull this off, so we're going to give him a squeeze, he peels off, and he's going to lay here, because he's got to go under the mouth. And here is this one. And we're just going to take that and lay that all the way up our little design here. Okay? Now, and this was my fault. I should have already had all this cut. So I apologize that I do not. So let me just cut his little face here. Sarah, go get you some sharp scissors. we got to cut this real quick because I want to show these ladies how the... Um, uh, What's it called? It works. <laughs> oh. Okay, there's his white face, which is in. Are y'all having a good day? I hope. We are having a great day. All right. Okay, girl, when you cut this, just leave a little tiny little edge all the way around where those little tick marks are. Does that make sense? Okay, Sandy, come and tell us what people are talking about online here. Tell us what they're, <laughs> tell us what they're doing because, you know, they're... they're awesome video hostess which is me has um has dropped the ball and um it's hooked into the mouth yeah so oh. yes we're mouse people yeah. I, I i struggle with we'll have a lot of hello hello okay i i have a question because sandy's gonna sandy's reading um the comments um, so be sure and give Sandy a hello. And I need you to tell me, how many of you have done applique before? How many of you have done applique before? How many do I have and how many have I seen? Yes, we're gonna, um, that's my next question. How many of you, would you pop in your comments, how many of you have actually done applique? Never long, there's no need to apologize, Martha. <laughs> She's Deborah. You're the, Deborah. you're the sweetest thing. I'll tell you what. Y'all just always make me feel so good because, truthfully, I have my moments where I think I've got everything figured out and I've got it all lined out. And uh, you know, 
And Dave Matthews thinks you're doing great. Oh, well, thank you, Dave. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, has anybody said, how many of you have done applique? Yay or nay? Uh, Dave says me. Okay. Oh, well done, uh, Dave. And then Linda Dean Lloyd says, I do a lot. And Gaia says that she's done it both ways. She loves wooden bear patterns. Yeah, I do, too. They're Priscilla so cute. Pa Paris. And Hi, Priscilla. She does applique. And Susan Tellez is working on a Pokemon applique right now. <laughs> Awesome! I love it! Okay, so, um, I think I've caught up. I've got Sarah over here cutting. Here, honey, give me part of that, and we're almost done. Never long wants to learn applique, and Bernadette... Hey, Bernadette! Gonzalez has done a pillow Hawaiian applique style. Okay, that's... Pauline Roberts is an eternal beginner. Oh, I love it! I love it! Uh, Linda Dean Lord just did one that was raw edge for the first time. Awesome. Dave Matthew has done Hawaiian needle turn. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. I have one other thing I want to show you so I can just, like I said, I can just wow you with my cutting skills. Okay. So, you know, when you have these, like, little flowers like this, um, it can be a real pain to, you know, cut around each one of those little petals. So this is my quick tip. So here is one of your Tuesday tips. So let me show you. Okay, Becky, go down there and get us a close-up. So what I do is I do all of one side, just like that. Clip, clip, clip. Because I can't tell you, aside from my AccuQuote cutter, I can't tell you how many flowers I've cut out because um, not at all AccuQuilt dye flowers work for the appliques that I do. So I cut a lot of these little funky petals like that. Then what I do is I come back. So see, I've cut the right-hand edge of every one of those petals, right? So then I come over here, and I just pop my scissor into that corner. See it right there? And we're going to just spin around my petal. And we pop it back into that next corner. And we pop around that one. I mean, look how much faster this is, guys. Oh, my gosh. Super easy. There it is again. And here we come again. And remember, this is not rocket science, folks. So we don't need to get all worked up if we are not exactly on the line because I'm going to tell you as soon as I turn this over and lay it on my pattern you're going to go oh isn't that the cutest little flower and I will say yes it is see right back down there in that corner and look how fast zip right around done now look how pretty that is see I mean who knows that was super fast easy that's my tip for the day. No, I have others, but anyway. Okay, so now this is what we're going to do. Like I said, we're actually, you would actually be building this right on top of your design here, on your, on your pillow, or your tea towel, or your quilt square, or your whatever. It really, it's just so easy. But I'm going to show you one other way to do this, and I think you will like this. So, Becky, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. I know. Well, no, we're good. I need a, you know, I just want you all to know I have the best production company out here, but they have to work with me, so, you know, at times it's a challenge. Okay, so Becky, I want you to, we're going to look at both of these. Okay. Tempted and ta-da. Well, I'm laughing because this one is real static and it's making the hair on my face stand out. How weird. Okay, so there's this one and there is this one. Both of these things are called applique pressing sheets. And they are your friend. And the reason that they are your friend is I'm going to show you one of the really beautiful things about working with one of these two products. This one is um, Applique Mott by the Quilting Gypsy. And then this one is just called the um, uh, Applique uh, Pressing Sheet. I don't know who they're by. So here we go. So let me show you how this works. All right, I'm going to use this one because you can see through it a little bit better. Okay, do you all remember this little pattern that she laid out there for us that she set up? 
You're going to love this. I'm just telling you. Okay, so here we go. All right, so I am going to take my little design. There it is. There's my paper. First layer. First layer. And I am going to lay my applique pressing sheet on top of my design. Do you all see that? Okay, so Becky, let's go up a little bit higher. Okay, can you all see my little design here? Sarah, can they see my design? Yeah. yeah. Sort of. Sort of? Okay, so then here we go. This is what we're fixing to do. I hope you all are ready for this because it really is great. I can now see my outline of every piece that has to go on here. Oh That's my gosh, really there's story. the A, there's the A. So my first thing that I'm going to do is, remember, Kelly said, start with A and lay it on according to the alphabet. So here's my A, so I'm going to lay them right there. Ta -da -ta -da. And here's my B, and remember, remove the paper, because if you don't, you are not going to be happy. There's my B. And then we have our C and D. So here's my C, and he's a little shorty morty, but he's going to come up here. And here is my D, and he is going to come up here. And see how they're right beside each other? Okay. There we go. And then we have our funky E and F. And remember, these are these little tiny guys. They're right here. Okay, so we're going to give him a pinch. Hang in here with me, guys. It is going to be worth it, I promise. See how cute he looks. Someone is asking if you use paper scissors or your fabric scissors. Well, here's the thing. I use my fabric scissors because if we really want to get technical, paper is a natural fiber, is it not? Yes. And so that being said, I always, I just, I grab my sharpest scissors to do this because because the thing is I want you all to think about the points of these flowers if you've got some old dull paper scissors what is going to happen with that I mean, it's not going to be good you're, you're going to you're going to get like little stringy fuzzies here well I don't want stringy fuzzies in my points so I'm going to get the sharpest scissors I can and I'm going to cut those points so in the grand scheme of life you might as well just use your very good paper scissors. That's just Marcia's thought on that. So, um, yeah, fabric. Did I say paper? I, I meant your fabric. Very good paper. My scissors. fabulous, fabulous, fabulous paper scissors. Or fabric. See, I, my brain. I'm telling you. All right. So here we go. Now, my next letter is G and H. So that is the little horn. Now remember. Oh look, did I? Label them, yes. So this is H, so he's going to get a pinch. He's coming over here with this guy. And he's going to lay right on there. Look at that, right on top. And here is G, I'm not guessing. I love that. Give him a pinch. And he's going to lay right here, right on top of that horn. If I need to move things around, remember, I gave him a wee bit extra because I know that these um, edges of his horn are going to go under his face. So we've got that. And then we have, I'm going to lay out your ears here. I, J, K. I, K, J, and L. So we're going to go with um, I, J. So here it is. Inner ear left. Give him a pinch. Are y'all still with me? Sarah, are they still with me? Yeah. I haven't lost them? No, okay, good. I hope not. Because this is a stinking cute design. I want y'all to see it. Someone actually mentioned that those patterns would be cute blocks for baby quilts. Oh, they'd be adorable for the baby quilts. Oh, my gosh. I, who said that? I love that idea. Linda ah, way to go, Linda Lord. That was good. Here's my outer ear left. So this is the guy that's got to go on there. Let's put him on. Alright, so here he is. See how, he, see how he's coming in here and he's covering up his friend? Remember, this is the guy that was underneath. Are we doing good? Yes. 
All right. I'm coming, I'm coming. Here we are again. This is the under ear for the um, right side of my little goat. He's so cute. All right, there he is labeled. Marsha's not guessing. I just pick up the next one and read, which is really a good thing. Here he is again. Look how cute. Stinking cute. You gotta love it. Okay, so that is um, L. Now we've got his big face. So look at his face. They're cutting all that center out of there, but I know exactly where that goes. So here we go. Let's get M. Give it a pinch. Okay, we're just going to lay him. Whoops, I moved his mouth. So the really nice thing about this pressing mat is if I needed to hit that with the iron, I could because it's not going to it's going to keep it from moving on me. So here's the top of his head. And here it is here. Looky there. Cute, eh? And there he is there. Now see there? Look. Yay. All right, so that is M. And then we have N is his white face. So we're going to give that a pinch. I'm working fast, guys. I'm working fast. I don't want to lose you. So see, look. Here's here's the lower part of that face. Remember I said that he has that mark, so we know it's going under something. So looky there. There's his face. It's laying on top there. Oh, is my next one, which is the snout. Are we getting a goat? Yes, it's so cute. Whoop, 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 whoop. And he needs to go under that guy. There we go. All right, and then I was going to say, oh no, where does nose go? All right. Last but not least is his nose. Sarah, I need you to do something for me. I need you to go over there and get that iron and, and bring it over here and probably plug it into our... And here's his nose. Okay, so do we have, I think we're doing pretty good with our goat, don't you? They're going to go on last, so okay. we're going to press him down. Okay, so Sarah, you're going to have to plug it into the thing right there. And if we need to undo something, I don't think we do. Got it? Okay, perfect. Let me have that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so we started at A. I need to move him down a little. Okay, Becky, look right here. All right, do you see how right here we've got these little bits of his mouth that are not covered up? Can you all see that right here? Here's, here's the end of his snout. So what we need to do is before I hit it with the iron, we're going to make an adjustment and make sure that his snout is covering those little bits of his cheek. Oh, look how cute that is. Isn't that adorable? Oh my gosh. All right, so now, here is the actual beauty of the pressing sheet. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this. You ready, Becky? I'm ready, Freddie. And we're just gonna lay it on there. Yes. We're gonna count to five. And we're gonna lay it on there. And we're going to lay it on there. And we're going to let it cool. Because what that has done is that has allowed me to iron my pieces together. And those pieces that are overlapping and sticking on everybody, they are now glued together. How brilliant is heat and bond or steam seam or um, the other one that we carry is let me tell you what its name is this is a new one when we just got it it's called hot fix adhesive this is beautiful and um, if you don't want to sew it you don't have to but I'm going to tell you I have to sew it because I you know there's that part of me that's just kind of goofy all right now we have what do we have left of our design guys look we've got our little flowers so the first flower 
is going to be this guy because he's in the back and he's going to cover up our um, goat face. Here we go. So he's going to go. Well, he's kind of a chubby. I just want to make sure that the end of my leaf is going to be covered so it doesn't really matter how he's turned but now he's covered. Do y'all see what I'm talking about? The end of my little, my little stem? He's got to be covered up. So he's covered up now. And I like that. Now the thing is, if these flowers were actually not touching him anywhere, we would we could add these on later. But um, they are actually touching his beard and his cheek here. So we've got to put them on now. And then last but not least, we've got this little guy. Here we go. One more, one more. And he's going to lay here. There we go. Now yeah, that's close enough. I mean, once I'm off this design, y'all will never know. Well, you will, because now you know. Okay, so here we go. We're just going to hit this with the iron. All right, now, once this is cooled, I want to show you all what this does. Look. It's stuck, but the pressing sheet, it doesn't stick to that because of, of what it's made of. And so I'm actually able, and I hope my flowers are stuck here. I think we're, oh, right there, it didn't stick. We are now able to actually lift this whole thing up. Here he comes. Up, 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 up. All right, Becky, are you ready? And looky here. Watch. OMG. Remember, we what did we do? We found our center of our towel in our very easy manner. Here's my center. Well, we know that here and the point of his beard is going to be the center of my goat, even though we got a lot of stuff over here. I'm going to put him on this pressing mat so I don't won't make my table mad. All right, here we go, look. All right, so here's the center. Ooh, I'm going to have to do those flowers in a brighter thing there. Looky there, people. Look at that. Now, all I have to do is just make an adjustment, make sure he's centered. And I'm pretty happy with that. And then here we go. Now we're going to count, and we're going to count to seven. Five, six, seven. And now, looky there. Now he's re now he's ready to be stitched down. Hooray! Don't you love this? I love this. So the thing is, now you get to choose your favorite your favorite stitch, whether it's a blanket stitch or um, wh whatever. Uh, there's some really great um, decorative stitches that you can do fun edges on. If you're a satin stitch kind of person, then you're going to turn your zigzag down and um, make it almost solid as you go around here. Um, Michelle Watts matches her um, thread to the fabric that's in um, that she's sewing on top of and does a real small little zigzag. So you've got a lot of options here. And the thing is, Becky, let's grab this little guy one more time. Then once that's done, then you're going to go back in and you're going to add on your stitching. So, I mean, he looks cute with his little worried face. So I will tell you, you can either do that as a triple stitch, which is what I did here on his on his nose. So that's a triple stitch on your sewing machine. Um, I uh, did hand embroidery on this, but um, I think Becky, you can see good here. On here, I used the blanket stitch. I used it on all of the pieces, and I just matched the. Um, I don't know if you all can see. We're trying, but I actually matched the thread to the color of my fabric that I was stitching on. And then of course the little um, the little part of his um, horns I actually uh, hand embroidered. 
there is one other thing that I want to show you about how when you are doing your um, stitching how you're going to keep it um, parallel to your foot so if you will give me one second here and we're just gonna I'm just gonna use this guy because I can why not right There we go. I'm just going to iron this because this actually. Okay. Becky, are we ready? We're ready. Okay. Here we go. So, Becky, you want to. Oh, shoot. I didn't get a foot pedal. Oh, my gosh. This is kind of long. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize I was taking so long, but, you know, what? I, I can't help it. You know, I start talking and I'm. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, our decorative stitches. And um, on the uh, 570, it's the last folder. And we're going to do the blanket stitch. So that's number 1329 on the 570. This is the machine I have at home that I use all the time. So I want you all to notice, and I, and I did my best to make sure that I have it where you can see the thread. All right, so when we are, when you are stitching this, um, Becky, can you grab those scissors? Can you all see, or is it no, or we got a glare? Do we have a glare, Becky? Yeah, sort of, maybe right there. Okay, let me see if I can turn the light off. There we go, now can they see better? Can you see right here? Yes, and Becky, we may need to get a really, okay. Can they see that? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, as I'm sewing, do you see here is the edge of my applique, and I love the number 20 foot. And the reason that I love an open toe embroidery foot is this reason. It's open in there, and I can see exactly where my needle is going to land when I take my stitch. So I want to make sure, as I am sewing, that my fabric of my applique stays parallel to this foot. All right, so Becky, if you can keep it that close, I can, I can go along here. Okay, so here we go. So see, it's going to... What in the world? Oh, turn it off. There we go. All right, so look, see how it jumps? All right, so now do you see how it's, how it's really chubby and it's close to the edge of my foot? So this is when your freehand system comes into play. I'm going to push my freehand system over, and I'm going to lay my, lay my foot back down. Now look, it is parallel with the inside toe of my foot. So we're just going to come along. And when it starts to move away, see? See how it's not parallel? It's moving over to this side. So we're going to straighten it up. There we go. And we're going to straighten it up again. And we're going to straighten it up again because it's because it's curving in right there. And now it's curving back out. Oh my gosh. So this is why your freehand system is such a good friend on applique because it allows you to take those stitches and just use your knee to lift your machine so you are not having to constantly reach back here and lift your foot up. Okay, so see I'm back again. There he is. So we're going to straighten him up, make him parallel again. And that is how we do it. So... I don't I I hope that, that has given you guys the challenge to give um, machine applique using heat and bond uh, so, um, what's the other one uh, the steam seam two or the um, applique fix 
I am hoping that this will encourage you to try that because just like Linda said, which I thought was a fabulous idea, Linda, is the fact that you've got these absolutely adorable little appliques that would make the sweetest baby quilt. And um, there's a lot of other great designs out there as well. For those of you who don't have an embroidery unit, so many of Kimberbell designs can actually be done in the sewing version and it is applique just like this. So um, anyway, I hope that you guys have enjoyed our tips and tricks for Tuesday. I hope you all have learned something. And um, as always, we love you and we appreciate you. And we hope that you have a great rest of your day. And uh, if Stephanie Cabrera is on, Stephanie, I'm waiting for a box from Kimberbell. And when we get that, we will definitely be doing a box opening looking at all the Kimberbell goodies. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I love you. I appreciate you for joining me. And we'll talk to you soon.